Hello everyone, welcome to Pointer Technology. Today we'll be discussing about the uh, KNX uh, system. It's uh, uh, one of the uh, open protocols that use uh, for home automation. So basically we'll be going through the uh, bit introduction about the KNX EIB system. Then we'll be discussing about the typology, some uh, rule sums, for the design concept KNX system is actually a worldwide for home and building uh, control it was uh, founded in 1999 by these three uh, organizations a combination of them and they come up with the uh, KNX as the uh, standard to use for the building and home control uh, KNX has more than 400 to or this is that now I think it's more than 600 companies manufacturing the same manufacturing products that they can communicate in uh, same protocol so uh, over here as explained in the earlier video we don't have the vendor like vendor uh, lock issue you can select the devices from uh, ABB, Schneider, uh, Tiban, HDL uh, there are so many you know, uh, big players that are manufacturing uh, products in a KNX, so you can mix and match between the front-end uh, devices and the uh, back-end devices from different different uh, uh, manufacturers. And they're all communicating in the same uh, protocol, so there is no worry of, uh, of having an issue of the, you know, let's say, matching uh, devices from different vendors. Maybe you have a client that he, they are so much of interested to have a, a nice finishing a nice look of the front end devices from certain uh, uh, company and however for the cost uh, effective you can use the back end devices from a different vendor based on their prices maybe different different factor it's depending on case to case it's a decentralized system as explained earlier so we don't have an issue of uh, one point failure um, a KNX system is actually uh, the communication in the KNX. We refer to it each and every signal uh, in this, within the system as a telegrams. Uh, normally, in the normal communications, uh, TCP IPs we refer to as a package. Maybe some of the uh, system, like a BMS system, they refer to token or uh, different uh, names. But when you are discussing about the KNX and talking in a KNX uh, systems, always we refer to a signal as a telegrams. Uh, so the KNX systems uh, communications media, you can use a uh, twist pair, which is uh, normally you can see in most of the uh, uh, projects, they use a KNX green cable, black and, uh, and the red uh, cable. Uh, also it can be communicated through the power lines, but rarely you can see that nowadays people they use for projects. Also it can be communicated through the KNX uh, RF radio, infrared and uh, also you can communicate through the uh, ethernet which is as known as uh, eib net over ip or uh, knx net over ip so mostly uh, uh, most of the projects that uh, you'll see that implemented in the markets use the twist pair uh, wiring moving on to the uh, knx topology so basically the main component of the KNX system is the power supply. Uh, this power supply actually is, an, is not a normal uh, power supply just supplying uh, DC voltage from the uh, 27 to 30 volt DC. It has uh, something called chalk. This chalk, the responsibility of it is uh, to differentiate between the uh, power supply because the power is traveling within the same cable. That these two cables will carry power and data. So the chalk will, uh, will differentiate between the power and between the telegrams that are traveling from devices. So let's say that within any device that uh, triggers uh, telegrams will go through the power supply. The power supply will understand whether this is a, a, a normal power or it is a, a telegram. Uh, we have a line coupler. So the line coupler main, main uh, task of it is to differentiate between the power supplies and to have segregated lines. I'll explain a bit uh, about the lines and then we have an area so basically uh, one power supply you can see here that you can see the diagram here one power supply with a chuck 
it has a line coupler and then you can have uh, devices connected to the line and it goes till the next line and you can have up to maximum up to 15 areas so these are we consider as, as an area you can go up to from 1 to 15 area the maximum of the lines we can have from 1 to uh, from 1 to 16 15 will be lines and the uh, number 16 will be the backbone of the lines so each and every uh, lines you have uh, a power supply a line coupler and each and every power supply maximally can drive 64 uh, devices and you can add a repeater if you add another uh, line coupler within the line you can have uh, 64 devices and you can repeat this one three times so the total number of the devices within one line you can have 256 devices and the same you can repeat it up to the uh, you know 15 lines so let us uh, go into a little bit uh, details to digest the typology part so as explained earlier we can have the, uh, uh, the knx topology in uh, uh, using line couplers which is we call it uh, tp or you can have an IP uh, typology and you can have a mix between them. So let's say that this is a building and you are designing for a, a certain buildings. So you divide the building into two areas, which is we call it the west wing and the east wing. So each west will be uh, one area and the east will be another area. So for both of this one area to area, you can put a line coupler. We consider this is a backbone line. And the backbone line couplers you should have a separate power supply for it to drive this uh, two line couplers to communicate easy then within each and every backbone you can have each area you can have uh, sub lines we have lines which is line number one you can put a power supply line coupler then you can uh, install up to 64 devices line lines line coupler and like this you can have line one 1.1 1 1.2 1 1.3 1 1.4 1. 1. 1.5 so basically in the KNX uh, addressing uh, uh, format you will have a three digits the first digit they refer to the uh, to the area then you have the second digit will be referring to the line and the third digit will be referring to the uh, device address same thing in the IP typology we can install instead of the line coupler we can have the power supply we will put uh, an IP gateway here and we'll install the devices and then the backbones will be communicating you know because all of this uh, uh, ip gateways uh, will act as the line and plus as the uh, the area backbone uh, for sure here you have to consider the switch to link all this uh, the, the ip gateways to communicate comparing between the uh, tp and the ip in the IP, uh, the prices will be a bit higher. However, in the TP, the price will be a bit cheaper. However, if let's say that you have uh, an installations for the for a certain project or your design uh, uh, hotel or whatever it is the project is, and you want to have a cost effective, it's always recommended to have the lines within the using the TP, which is the line uh, with line couplers. And the backbone you can replace it instead of using line coupler you can replace it with the replace replace it with an ip that ways so for the design concept let's say that we have a power supply this power supply will drive for you 64 devices the distance from the power supply to the first device from the power supply to the first device should not exceed 350 meter and the distance between a KNX device to the next device should not exceed 700 meter. And overall, in one line, the cable run distance should not exceed one kilometer. Uh, these are the main main concepts about the KNX system. In the upcoming uh, video, I'll be uh, talking about the KNX tools, which is used for the uh, uh, communications and I'll show you that how you can uh, register to the knx.org you can have an account everyone can open account they have a free uh, uh, training uh, materials you can read those materials you can have uh, more knowledge and more uh, understanding about the knx system uh, for the knx there is a software used called ETS engineering tool software 
for uh, configurations of the old and commissioning of all the KNX systems. So stay tuned and bye bye.